I used to always play this at the beginning of my episodes. Alan, what's up? Need to catch up. This is one of the pieces from one of my old videos. I played it today and Billy had never heard it. And I thought to myself, man, I gotta go back and do some, uh, start doing some old school videos again. I can't believe he didn't know this. He's like, what is this? And it, we actually were talking to Aaron at the same time. And, uh, and Aaron said, you don't know this, Billy? Billy's been here almost three years, I think. Something like that. Crazy. Uh, good to see everyone. Sorry it's been a while. Um, been a um, been a busy last couple weeks. My kids are all in school right now, so it's um, uh, it's like uh, it's just insane getting them out in the mornings. Although they're not going to school tomorrow, so it's it's good. They're just they're on a part time schedule, but. Um, this is weird. So last, so it's been a year since they went uh, to the week, really, since they went back to school. My daughters, Dil Dylan's been back in school par every other week at his school. Now, I drove them to school for years, right? And to remember how I went to, how I drove them to school. I always would try to find the shortest way and just kind of memorize what what the different ways were, because there's many different ways that I can drive them to school. And there are six schools that are within a mile of, uh, uh, that are within a mile of my kids. My two daughters actually go to the same school, but two different campuses, about, about a mile apart. But there's about six schools within a mile of that, that everybody drives to. It's Atlanta, everybody drives to, to school. So, um, anyways, so I'm driving to school yesterday and I go by and I was like, oh, the wrong, I missed the turn. <laughs> My daughters are, are looking like, what is wrong with you? And then I go past and I make it right down this other street and, I, and I'm just like, okay, well, yeah, I can kind of backtrack. And then my girls are like, just use Waze. You don't know where you're going. Just use Waze. Do you guys know Waze, the uh, uh, the app Waze? Does anybody use Waze? Waze is great, right? So I put on Waze just so I didn't have to listen to them tell me that I'm lost, <laughs> okay? Then today I'm like, okay, I got this down. So... I make the turn. The first turn I get right. The first right-hand turn I get right. And then it's supposed to be th three lefts before I make my next turn. But I went met, made the le turn on the second left. But it was it's so dark in the morning. I mean, it's pitch black out, right? And I don't have my glasses. I forgot my glasses. My And I got new glasses, by the way. I've got two new pairs. I'm going to show them both, both to you. So... I just got two different styles and everything. It's weird. This one I really like. This is comfortable. Um, although it looks like my ears are uneven here. There we go. Uh, so these, I've got these, and I've got these that are a little bit more lightweight. You guys notice any difference? God, my ears must be really. Um, anyway, so, so I made the wrong turn today, but... We're all the three of us are looking, and, and I don't have ways on, and I'm going. Uh, I was like, "Is this right?" And they're all they're both looking around. They're like, "Yeah, um, no, no, it's definitely not right." Put on ways, so I put on ways again, and um, <laughs> purple ways, great album. <laughs> so I put on ways, and then I was like, "Okay." turn around, go back and then made a left and then made the next left. And then we, then it was, then we all said, Oh, there's this one mailbox that has a dog on it. Then we all recognize that. 
And then we were good. Then I thought, okay, I got this now. But then they don't have uh, they don't have school tomorrow. So, anyways, but that was my. But I've been driving to school for years. At least three years. This is the th well. I mean, I didn't go last year, but I mean, went the first half of last year. Anyways, so that, I just thought that was kind of funny, right? Because you. <laughs> Peter Frampton wants you to show you the ways. <laughs> Why do I like humor like that? Let's see. After six years, I'm still a baby wazer. I don't contribute to the conversation. I know my wife always will will, will do stuff. She'll uh, she'll put in where there are wrecks and things like that. I don't I don't do that. I, I I'll get into a wreck if I do that. Um, but you know, I like to to. I like to think that I have this uh, have a pretty good memory for this stuff, but man, it's so dark. I I had I had my glasses on, I definitely would not have made the mistake. I don't think today, but uh, I just forget. I've been le I leave them in the studio and I forget to put them in the car. I need to put. I actually bought got two pairs, one for the car, right, so that you're never thinking. Oh, I don't have my glasses in the car. So anyways, uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, um, um, that's what I'm going to do from now on. Somebody says, hi, do fans ever ask you to produce for them? Yes, all the time. So I get probably 25, um, I probably get 25 emails a day with people asking me to produce and sending me their songs. And I probably get another 30, 40 emails a day about people sending me their songs anyways that I can't, that I don't have time to listen to. Um, so it's, um, I feel, you know, I feel bad. I just can't, I just can't answer, you know, I answer as many emails as I can when they're ones that absolutely need to have an answer. Um, but I, when people ask me, sometimes people will, um, um, some people will ask me for, um, about producing and I just say I'm retired. So there you go. I'm retired. It sounds good. Um, So, um, so I had, um, had a visitor in the studio the other day, Brent Hines, um, who is the guitarist and one of the singers of Mastodon. If you guys know Mastodon, they're an amazing Amazing rock band that's been around for 21 years. They're from Atlanta. They are a heavy band. They're a they are a prog band, a stoner band, a many different kinds of rock bands. They're just incredibly cool band. I did a "What Makes the Sun Great" uh, video on them. Um, probably about 50 ep episodes ago, or something like that. Um, Scott says, congrats on the 2.2 million. I actually hit, um, I actually hit 2.2 million yesterday, I think it was. And, um, I think I can get to 3 million this year, but, um, but I, I need some, um, I just need a few really, uh, particular kinds of videos that, uh, like my top 20 videos, those videos bring in hundreds of thousands. Some of them bring in hundreds of thousands of subscribers. It's amazing, you know? Um, so I'm going to, I'm trying to, I have some top 20 topics that I have written down. I have a list of what makes this song great. So now that I have a, a hundred out of the way, now I can start going back to making number, just regular what makes this song great. So I'm so glad. Doing 100 was, um, doing 100 was tough, you know? It was really tough. But I'm very proud of the way that came out. And I was so honored to have Peter in the video. That was incredible. 
Um, anyways, I, I would do a What Makes a Song Great about pretty much all the songs on Frampton Comes Alive. I've done Tears for Fears. I did um, um, Not Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Um, um, ba, 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 Na, na, na. What is the uh, what is the song? Ba, da, 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 da. This is my love. Um, head over heels. Thank you. Um, let's see here. So, head over heels. There we go. Rick, you ever become uninterested in music for a short time? That's a really interesting question. Um, not forgettable, Terry. It is not forgettable. That's an amazing song. Oh. What's up, Leo? I will not accept that that is forgettable. It's unforgettable. Um, I love that song. Um, um, so I did a video today that I put out that I just made on the spur of the moment. Sorry for my creaking chair again. Um, see, it's creaking chair. But um, I made a video that I thought was a good video, and it just died. Died. And um, the it's interesting that the... Uh, my music theory videos that are live streams do really well. My music theory videos that are just videos don't do as well. Um, I don't know. So anyways, if you guys haven't watched my video, I thought it was a pretty good video. Uh, but it's interesting. When I um, did my storytelling video where I wore this shirt on here, how many of you saw my story, my video that I did? I kind of retold my story about not getting into college, but related it to the... Um, to my, the story of the producer from my old band calling me to, um, to, well, he called me to talk to me, but he apologized. I haven't talked to him over 20 years. And I told him, don't even worry about it. Not, uh, not important. So, so that video, um, I, I was talking to my friend Stephen, and he asked me if uh, if I ever thought about revisiting some of those topics. And I said, yes, I, th I wanted to revisit this because most people honestly don't know that story about me not getting into college. I told that story in the first six months of my channel. So you figure there's 2 million, 2.15 million people that have not heard that story. Um. So, but he said, why don't you tell it from a different perspective? So the perspective I told it uh, from, I'm taking these, no, I have to leave these on so I can read your comments. So the perspective was that I related the two stories. Thank you, Mark. Um, I'll answer that in a second here. Um, the perspective was that uh, relating those two stories about the kind of you are sent on these different paths because of things that, you know, initially you thought were disasters in your lives or, or you just very, very difficult things to deal with. I mean, the first one was profound. I was so young, 18, didn't get accepted in college. And that, that affects your kind of your self-image, your self-worth in a way. Um, um, and, but then the one re major label record deal I had as a, as a, uh, artist or whatever you want to call it when you're in a band, um, was basically ruined by this guy, but had it not been ruined, um, you know, would things have happened the same way? Probably not. You just never know, right? 
we who knows we could have stayed together made another record we could have gotten our option picked up and, and uh you know we could have toured for a couple more years and then every other thing i wouldn't have done the i9 record i wouldn't have done any of the records that i produced maybe i wouldn't even be a producer wouldn't have met my wife had my kids you never know right uh but um anyways the um but that video that I did, this talking video, storytelling video, I did one take and there's no edits in it. Not one person um, not one person mentioned, did anyone notice that it was one take, that there was just literally not one edit in it? I sat down, I told the story, and that was it. That was the video. I've, I'm not sure that um, I'm not sure that I've ever done one take other than live streams. I've never, I'm not sure I've ever done a video that was just one take. There's not a zoom, there's not anything. Um, Mark, you can barely get, hey, it's Mark without an edit. <laughs> nice. Um, I hope no one is upset your channel. They're keeping track of how many cuts are on a 20 minute video. No, but there is no cuts in the video. Zero. None. I didn't stumble over one word. I don't know. It was just, it was so strange. See, didn't notice. Literally one pass, one take, one take about my story. Oh, you're right. Aunt Penny, one take. Subi, what's up? You've always done that here. That's true. But the pacing, um, the pacing of the story of these videos, you know, sometimes you get off on your pacing. You pause too long. You're trying to think of something and you can't quite grab it. The Aunt Penny story was not really the same because I played the video of Aunt Penny and I, it did have edits. It wasn't all the way through. I mean, I went from my, I started the video and then I went to the other video, then I came back. So that really isn't, doesn't, doesn't even count in that. Um, so yeah, so, so there you go. So that was, um, I can't think of another video that I've done that in, especially a 15 minute video with no edits. Um, okay. So I got a couple of super chat questions and I'll ask you, uh, answer your super gladly answer your super chat questions. Any of you, any of you that want to contribute to super chat, uh, Mark says, I've been wanting to ask for a while, what's your take on modern classical music? Obviously it doesn't sound anything like it did in Mo Mozart's day. No, I played a piece of modern classical music to start the video. It was one that I wrote for, for my, uh, for one of my videos at the start of this video though. Uh, it depends on what it is. There, there's a lot of modern classical music out there. Some of it's amazing, but some of it's dreadful. <laughs> Rick, I'd like to see what makes a song great. Paul Simon song, but I reckon he could be a blocker. Well, I had Paul Simon blocked that video and then reinstated. But um, but it did get reinstated. So, and it was up for a couple of years. I'm not sure. I, I want to do another Paul Simon song. But I want to do more contemporary music as well. Um, I definitely want to do more contemporary music. So, um, yeah. Um, I'm, I want to do some more of my top 20 videos. Um, the top 20 videos, those are fun to do. 
Um, I have I have four topics that I'm going to do videos on, one of which I thought that I might get people's opinion on and actually take a poll. Um, maybe I'll ask you guys here. Rick, music theory question. In the key of... Wait, is the key... If the key is minor, do you say the progression is one five four one? Or no, 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 no. The one chord is one, is minor one, yeah. Yeah. And everything is adjusted. So the one chord is minor, two's diminished, three's major. Four is minor, five is minor, just like it would be. It's just like shifted from major. Um, Black Cat Bones, thank you so much. Um, um, I'm taking top 20 uh, request videos here. And I'm going to put them in my um, I see a good one there. One that, that, that people have mentioned on me, the television themes that I actually have had on my list for two years. And I already know I already can I pretty much can get, get about 15 of them right off the top of my head. I keep seeing the Smiths. I know the Smiths. You don't have to keep posting it. I see everything in the chat. Um, um, and I see the band television, double K. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, top 20 keyboard players on the internet? That's eh, not, not really a... Uh, uh, top 10 TV composers? That's mm, not... That'd be really... Top 10 saddest songs? Ooh, that's a good one. Top 20 pedals. Um, huh. Let's see here. I just had, I'm having some great ideas here. Top twenty Rick Beato videos. What's up, Rob? Top twenty producer engineers. That's really kind of niche, like for people like me. Um Could do my top 20 albums. Um, <laughs> Michelle, top 20 song, best use of bagpipes. Um, top 20 songs with orchestras. It's pretty cool, but that's kind of uh Um 
Um, record producers. Hmm. What's up, Monty? Film scores. Oh, man, there's just so much. Um, I'm just writing some of these down. Okay, this is good. There's definitely some good ones on here. Um, singer songwriters, I like that, Subi. That's good. That's really um. That's really. Um. Okay, these are great. These are great. Okay, I got I got a I have a I have a bunch here. This is good. Okay, now I I don't I probably don't dare do this. Um I was going to say um top 20 uh or I mean what makes a song great? what I should do. But, you know, with that, I got to test them first. Actually, I don't, you know, new songs, if I do newer songs, it really doesn't, doesn't, uh, it really doesn't matter um, because uh, none of the new bands block anything ever. So it's not a, it's not really a big deal. Um... But uh, anything old, um, I am going to do a Holdsworth video. I am going to do a Holdsworth video. I got a new Holdsworth guitar um, for the video. Um, I got a new Kiesel. I'm going to show it to you guys. I haven't shown it to anybody yet. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think it's in here. This here is the Alan Holdsworth signature guitar. This is made by Kiesel. Uh, Carvin became Kiesel. So here it is. You can see it here, right? It has a uh, very flat fingerboard, 20 inch radius fingerboard, flat like a classical guitar. Um, got a vibrato, whammy bar, right? Headless tuners are down here. Okay, it's very light. Uh, very easy to reach the uh, 24th fret. And um, so I can see if you can see if I get, go from the 12th fret, for example, how far I can reach. I'm not sure how many frets that is, but that's like four, seven, no, four, six, seven, eight, nine frets. I can comfortably reach nine frets here, right? So, uh, so I can play Holdsworth things. If I point back like this, I can obviously reach much further. This is actually uh, half position on cello. I always did that. That was that's very common to do on cello like that, right? So my stretch was always really good on the guitar. 
because of that. But if I point back like this, if I go to the, the uh, 12th fret, right? You guys know what interval that is. It's a seventh, minor seventh, right? It's not a short scale though. That's one, two, one, uh, let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten frets. Pretty good, right? Ten fret stretch there. So, um, pretty good. Minor seventh from there. I mean, from here, tritone. That's pretty comfortable. That's pretty comfortable. You guys see when I play all, you know, play on Instagram and everything, I always play fourths. So that's very comfortable for me. So um, you would tear ligaments, Carmen, with your short stubby thing. Chris, can you talk about how I got to read this with my glasses on? Sorry. Talk about how aging has affected your performance, both good and bad, your ear, fingers, improvisation, imagination, innovation, patience for practicing. Oh, this is a great question. Okay, this, I have to hold, hold this question here. Hold it still so it doesn't advance. Okay. How has aging affected all these different things? This is probably, this is a really great question. Okay, let me start with with um, performance. So my playing has changed in the last year and a half. Um, I because of the way I hold the guitar for Instagram. Now, when I hold the guitar normally, I play totally different things. I can play with better, but with better vibrato. I can't play with great vibrato holding the guitar up like this. It's very awkward. You can't get the leverage you can get, you know. And people ask me why I don't bend much when I do Instagram stuff because it's hard to bend. You can't get leverage bending that way. It just feels weird. So I just don't bend that often, right? Whereas when I normally play with my guitar here, I bend all the time. And if you look at videos that I bend in, I'm always holding the guitar the normal way, right? Um... But it's holding the guitar up just so it fits in the screen on Instagram has made me change the kinds of ideas I play. I don't play anything like I used to play, even when I was in my 20s. Now, do I have better chops now than I had in my 20s? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, in some ways I do. I have better chops. But um, when you're younger, you can, you know, there's things you can do faster. In more fast twitch muscle fibers and things like that. I mean, when I was 18, I could long jump 23 feet. Right now, if I tried to long jump, I could long jump about five feet. Okay? I'm not as fast. I can't jump as high. Um, I'm not as flexible. Right? All the things. And the same thing goes for the hands. But the hands don't... Uh, you use the hands all the time, so they don't... Uh, unless you have arthritis like I do in the index finger in this hand, um, I'm not affected by it that much, right? Um, per so performance is kind of a um, mixed bag. I can do I can do a lot of things better than I ever could now. Um, improvisation, imagination. I think I have a better imagination than I had when I was younger. Motivation and patience for practicing. Um, I would say that my motivation is unchanged and my patience for practicing is unchanged. My pra time, the time that I have to do it is, is been diminished. Obviously I don't have as much time as I had when I was a teenager. I got three kids. I'm married. I have a wife, three kids. I have six animals. Um, and a YouTube channel. Uh, so, um, so I don't think aging has really affected me much at all, honestly. So, um, um, 
Uh, let's see here. It's, it's a very interesting question. Really cool question. Um, I, I, this is weird. I can't see. I must be at a kind of a weird distance here or something. I don't know. Let me try these glasses. Rick Beata with a headless guitar. You must have come in late, Jeff. This is a Alan Holdsworth uh, model. Exact, exact, his exact guitar that I'm going to use in a video. Um, that's why. I'm making an Alan Holdsworth video that I'm going to use. Um, what's up, Phil? Did somebody... OK Boomer me or something? I see OK Boomer here. Rhett will try to get you to put eights on that. There are eights on this. It's a 25. I don't know what the scale is on it. Leo, yes, no headstock. I still feel silly asking what string gauge you're on the guitar. It's, these are eights. You're playing Improvia as I got 10,000 hours in, in six months of practice with uh, with a time, time shift. I got... My 4,000 hours that I practiced was equal to 10,000 hours. Um, the irony having... So the, obviously that is not... Let's see, not aging. But what about mentally aging? What's your view on the guitar now versus 30 years ago? Um, okay. Um... Well, I know the guitar far better than I knew 30 years ago. Um, I um, uh, There's other things. My hearing is not as good as it was. But my pitch is as good as it was. Okay? Um, my hearing is not as good because I have tinnitus. Not all the time. I happen to be having very loud ringing right now. But not every day. Um, so yeah, so it's, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, get a dual camera set up for Instagram so you can hold the guitar normal. No, no, I, that would take way too much time. Helium Road, anyone who, okay, Boomer's Rick, must face him in a guitar duel and contemplate being crushed. Um, let's see here. Um, Wilmer, thanks for answering, MTV guy. <laughs> um, if you're curious, you stay sharp. So, um, I had this weird thing happen recently where I felt like, um, um, I felt like my, I was having problems with my memory. And um, I just, it's, it went on for about a week or so. And I was telling my wife, I cannot remember stuff. And I was working constantly. And you can really get um, so sleep deprived that you can't, uh, you can't think, you know, they use it for torture for a reason. And I spent a whole, about two days just sleeping a lot. And by the end of that second day, it was just, I just felt like a new person. It's amazing. It's really amazing. Um, the, uh, 
what's tough is staying up late and then I'm just not honestly I'm just not used to uh, being on my kids schedule and getting up at at 6 a.m um, that's that's the tough thing and then I, then I because I like to stay up late and work on stuff so I should get a 5g shield for my phone I don't know what that means. Do I ever miss performing live with a group? No. Not really. Man, I'm going to be 59 years old next month. Um, I feel like I've I performed plenty of times in my life. I performed a lot when I was in my 20s and 30s. You know? Um... I don't know how people go on tour when they're in their 70s. I just don't get it. I don't like to be, um, I don't like to be out. Yeah, I don't like to be out doing stuff at night like that. I'd rather just be focusing on being creative working here in the studio, whatever. But yeah, 59 I'm gonna be. Jacuz, let's see, you say, you say I look 45 max. There you go. Good man. There's a lot of people gonna be 59 here, it looks like. Notice I'm looking through the bottom of my glasses. Here I can I can see the thing now from here. Then when I get here I can't see and I gotta look through the bottom. It's weird. Yeah, so I'll be 60 in one year. That That is really profound. Sometimes I just think, you know, like, where is life gone? Really. It's, um... It's weird, you know? Where's the time gone? You just think back and you remember these... Um, I remember back in the 70s when my all my grandparents were alive in the early 70s. And... And all the people I knew that were born in the 1800s. It's really crazy. When I was growing up, I knew tons of people that were born in the 1800s. All the old people that were, um, all the old people that were around. It's crazy, you know? Didn't think anything of it. Now you think of people born in the 1800s. There's nobody alive born in the 1800s anymore. No one on earth. That time passed over the last few years. That But uh, everybody I knew lived through the 1918 pandemic. So, um, those people existed. They had full lives. They had full lives. My dad lived 85 years. And he's been gone for 17 years now. My dad was born in 1919. Be 102 now.
Yeah, so it's uh, it's, you know, it's a lot, lot to process. It's a lot to process. My dad had six kids in his family. Only two lived in their 80s. Everyone else died in their 60s or younger. Um, so, Steven, time and space is weird. It is. I try not to think about it too much. You know, I've got kids. I get young kids and stuff, and and you always hope to be around for them. But Eric, well, now I'm depressed. Don't be depressed. Life's great, man. Um, Aunt Penny was 79 when she passed away. Um, I have one, I have two aunts still living. My Aunt Virginia is 90, going to be 94 this year. And my Aunt Marion is going to be 85 this year. And, um, I lost two of my aunts in 2020, Aunt Penny and my Aunt Marge. My Aunt Marge was 98 and her dad was born in 1864, my great Great grandfather. No, that'd be my great grandfather. She was my great aunt. So what would that be? My great great grandfather? No, my great grandfather was born in 1864. Um, people can watch my videos for centuries, but will they? Youth is wasted on the young. My mom used to say that too. My grandmother used to say that. Um, yeah, my um, yeah, my grandfather. So I have a, I had a great grandfather that was born during the Civil War. The Civil War. Think about that. It was him. He had my Aunt Marge when he was 58. She lived in 98 to 2020. Aunt Marge was my mom's aunt. It was my great aunt. Then my parents and me, you know? It's not very far back, really. But, uh, you know, when my parents were growing up, there were people alive that we're in the Civil War. Dead people. Go look at parades back from uh, the 1935 on YouTube. You can look them up. They'd have veterans marching. They had veterans of the Civil Wars marching. Um... Um, but it's, um, yeah. Please do an interview with David Gilmore. Well, doing my Peter Frampton one was really, really, um, helpful for that. Maybe I can get... Yes, this is a key. So maybe I can get, um, maybe I can get David Gilmore to um, to be in a video. We'll see. But uh, anyways, this is good. I'm. Uh, I want to come on, say hi. I haven't been on in a while. You guys are great. Um, Auto Tune Wars. Yes. Don't waste in it. Yeah, don't waste a minute. That's right. That's right. Don't waste a minute. Phil. Age is just a number. If you have a young state of mind, you're still young. Well, I have a very young state of mind. So um, check out my new video I put out late today. 
It's not getting many views, but it's a good video. It's about, it's a more sophisticated improvisation video. It's doing poorly. Um, I'm not sure why. Really badly. Um, anyways. Okay, cool. All right. I've got everything. Um, we'll talk soon. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great, great evening. Great, um, great wet rest of the week. I'll see you.